And welcome back to the Schlocky Horror Picture Show and the television premiere of Frankenstein vs. the Creature Not from the Black Lagoon. I'd like to make that perfectly clear for all you lawyers out there. Blood Cove, not Black Lagoon. Have we got that straight? Good. Anyway, three renegade scientists have genetically engineered a half-man, half-fish abomination. Not a creature, okay? An abomination. But they're not resting on their laurels. For an encore, they've just reanimated Frankenstein's long-dead monster, too. The horror begins when the amphibious beast claims its first victims, killing a few bikini babes for doing nothing except taking their bikinis off for some cheesecake photos. There's a moral in that. Uh, dairy and sushi don't mix? Not only did Bill Winkler write, direct and produce this dumpster of delight, in an amazing feat of multitasking, Bill also plays the imaginatively named Bill. Mr. Winkler also gave us the Double D Avenger, but he wouldn't take it back, so we had to screen it, which may be burned into your memory. But I dare say you're more interested in the guest stars of Frankenstein vs. the Creature Not from the Black Lagoon. Butch Patrick is first of the rank. I mean, first off the rank, because he played the werewolf we see near the beginning of the film. Butch is most famous as Little Eddie Munster of the Munster Clan, but he made many appearances on other shows during the 1960s, such as Mr. Ed, My Favourite Martian, Daniel Boone, I Dream of Jeannie, The Monkeys, Gunsmoke, and eight episodes of My Three Sons as Gordon Deering. In later years, he followed his grandpa Munster's footsteps and has sunk to hosting late-night horror movies. The television equivalent of asking, would you like fries with that? The strange gypsy woman we see briefly is played by Raven Delacroix. From The Happy Hooker Goes to Washington, The Double D Avenger, Hear No Evil, Russ Myers Up, and my personal favourite, The Blues Brothers, as an over-enthusiastic audience member. Another old friend of mine is David Gerald, who plays the put-upon writer. This requires absolutely no stretch of the imagination, as he's best known as an award-winning science fiction author who kick-started his career in 1966 by writing The Trouble with Tribbles, possibly the most famous episode of classic Star Trek. Since then, David has written squillions of science fiction novels and stories, two of my personal favourites being The Man Who Folded Himself, about a guy who duplicates himself with a time machine so many times he distorts his own life and reality itself, and When Harley Was One, the story of a computer's relationship with its creator. I had the opportunity to ask David about his role in Frankenstein vs. the Creature from Blood Cove just before we went to air, and he didn't seem even remotely embarrassed. He told me he found the small role quite gratifying, especially since he got to write his own dialogue, and he said he's glad the film is finally getting the audience it deserves, which I think he meant in a good way. Ron Jeremy is a porn star nicknamed the Hedgehog, for reasons I'd rather not discuss, who was ranked, ranked with an R, as number one on the 50 top porn stars of all time list. Jeremy has also appeared in lots of non-pornographic films, such as Class of Newcomb High 3, The Good, The Bad and The Subhumanoid, Caged Fury, Tromeo and Juliet, The Boondock Saints, Toxic Avenger 4, Citizen Toxie, Tales from the Crapper, Poultrygeist, Night of the Chicken Dead, and Killer Schoolgirls from Outer Space. Mmm, class act, all the way. He's currently doing children's parties as Mario, just don't ask to see his Donkey Kong. The award for most enthusiastic performance in a motion picture titled Frankenstein vs. the Creature Not from the Black Lagoon must surely go to Lloyd Kaufman as the rowdy drunk. From 1979 to 1981, he wrote, produced and directed a series of profitable sex comedies with exclamation marks in their titles, including Squeeze Play, Waitress, Stuck on You and The First Turn On. He found mainstream success in 1985 with the hilariously violent superhero film The Toxic Avenger, which went on to become Troma's most popular movie, inspiring three sequels, a Saturday morning cartoon show, comics and tons of merchandise. Kaufman's follow-up to The Toxic Avenger was The Class of Newcomb High, co-directed by Richard Haynes, which inspired two profitable sequels and a healthy run on American late-night television. In the late 90s, Kaufman astounded everybody by making three critically acclaimed independent films. Tromeo and Juliet, Terra Firma, and the fourth installment in The Toxic Avenger franchise, Citizen Toxie. Always one to flog a dead mutant, 
Kaufman is still trying to get Toxic Avenger 5, the Toxic Twins, off the ground. I'm sorry, I seem to have strayed a little from the subject at hand. Before I forget altogether, let's just get straight back to Frankenstein versus the creature not from the Black Lagoon.